Hi, I'm Kazul, and welcome to my lair. I have been working hard to design and plan a new costume build for one for me and one for my husband. Um, my husband, he already has a really nice uh, rigid dummy that I've used for several projects for him already. Um, the problem was that is that I didn't have a dummy anymore. The last one I built was like in 2000. Uh, 14, 15, maybe something around there. And the last project I was able to use that dummy on before it disintegrated was Hogger. So I, I really needed a new dummy for this new project. Um, and in a future video, I'll tell you all about the project and my plans for that. But this video is specifically just about how I built this duct tape dummy. The idea behind a duct tape dummy is to make a replica of yourself, which you can then use to build costumes on so you don't have to be like trying to pin and measure things on yourself. It's very handy to have. It's uh, pretty cheap and easy to make, and it matches your own body proportions exactly. The first tip I have is to try and get more people to help you. I just had my husband helping me which is great, but I w it would have made it go a lot faster, even if we would have had just one more pair of hands available. Uh, but plans fell through, so and I really just wanted to get this dummy done, so we decided to do it this last week, and this is all the help we could get. The first thing is that I am wearing some of the under armor that I like to wear underneath my uh, costumes, and I'm being wrapped in plastic. Now, you see, I am just wearing like the Capri version of my Under Armour. I, I couldn't, for some reason, find the, the Under Armour that I have that goes all the way down to my heels. Uh, if, if you do it like me, I would strongly recommend having the one that covers your skin completely. And I'll go into that reasons for that later. But the first step was to wrap me in some plastic cling wrap, uh, kind of just focusing on the torso midsection over the shoulders, kind of building up like a swimsuit area, uh, not restricting my arms quite yet so that I can help as much as I can, even though you'll see I'm, I don't really help much at all. Some important areas to get correct is like right un up under your arm and also like as close to your crotch as you can so that your the inseam measurement on your dummy will be as accurate as possible. I know it can get kind of tight in there and it's good to have a, a very trusted, friendly person uh, to to do that part for you, but uh, just just try to get that as clean and tight as possible. One preference I have is that I like to know where the bottom of the foot is, even though I don't need the whole foot on the dummy. So I'm having my husband put some plastic wrap underneath my foot uh, in preparation for tape going there. Then the tape wrapping started. Uh, we started around my midsection, um, just trying to get that uh, close to my body. Like you have to be careful in this step because you, you can't like suck in. You just wanna try to be as relaxed and normal as possible uh, so as to not restrict your breathing and, and make it hard because you can pull the tape too tight. Then we took uh, some tape and kind of made like a cross over each shoulder. In between the legs can get pretty tough, but the closer it is to your body, the better the dummy will function. Now I'm having my husband mark with masking tape on the floor, uh, it, like where my feet are and also giving me poles, marking where my hands and the ends of those poles are. Those are just reference points for me because, you know, it's hard standing still for too long. So if I shift around, I need a reference point to 
going back to one single stance. As we're wrapping, we're trying to get like half the duct tape over wrap, overlapping with the last piece of duct tape. So you're essentially trying to get two layers at once, this whole wrapping. Because we'll, we'll be doing like a, another layer after this to try to get like at least four total layers. Some people go up to six. Uh, I, I just wanted to get out of the duct tape after a while and didn't want to go up that high. Now, when I get to the foot, what it like, if you're wrapping somebody's foot, it's very important to like, you know, have them rock up and then uh, put the tape underneath it and allow them to like put their weight back on the foot before wrapping it around the rest of their foot. Your foot, um, squashes down and stretches out a little bit when you're holding weight as opposed to like having it in the air. So if you wrap it tightly around the foot in the air, it'll like be squeezing and very uncomfortable around the foot uh, when you put it down and bear weight on it. So that's, that's what you saw me doing is I'd rock up He'd put the tape underneath my foot, I'd step back down, and then he'd finish wrapping my foot. Um, I just had him go underneath my heel and down my foot just a little bit, because I, I just like to have that indication on my dummy of where the bottom of my foot is, rather than just going to the ankle and maybe like losing the reference point for like how far down the ankle I went. Um, so that that's just one one uh, preference of mine. Another preference of mine, just like the foot, is that I like to go down my hand and make a little loop around my thumb, just so I have a visual reference point of where the hand is, and so I can tell exactly how far down the wrist the the costume piece that I'm building is. And here's the completed first layer of duct tape. So now it's time for the second layer of duct tape. I actually purchased a different color of duct tape to like have an easy visual reference for um, getting a very even coverage of the first layer. And we're just going to skip ahead to where we've gone through all the teal duct tape. So we've run across a problem. We're trying to do layer two and we've run out of teal uh, duct tape. So in order to be able to see between our layers of, of silver duct tape, we're going to take a sharpie and scribble all over uh, the silver layer that we got to cover so that we can have like a little bit of a reference for what we need to cover. We don't need to go so dense. But... So now we can see when we put on the second layer. So yes, as we can see, I'm kind of like a little bit of a Franken duct tape dummy with the different colors now because I didn't purchase enough. If I remember correctly, I just had bought uh, two rolls of the 20 yard colored duct tape and that was clearly not enough. I should have bought four or five. Uh, with the silver duct tape, I had like several large rolls of it already, so I didn't have to buy that. Um, so I don't remember the exact yardage of the silver that I had. But either way, I got covered completely with uh, four layers of duct tape. And then I wanted my husband to draw some reference lines for me while it was still on my body. Notably, I needed him to mark my elbows. I 
wanted him to mark the line where my shoulder seam would go. I needed him to mark where my knees were and kind of like the line around where the bend of my knee is. Um, also, I had him draw a line down my center middle that was kind of in like as, as center as he could get it and straight. And the last lines were around my neck and my waist, just using a string to kind of help guide him around. Uh, and then it was time to cut me out. So he needed to draw some lines just up the arms and the legs a little bit with registration lines drawn perpendicularly across uh, so that I could line it back up. The strategy is you is I wanted to cut as little as the dummy as possible for me to be able to wiggle out. And so if you go up your forearm just a little bit from the hand and go up to about your knees on each leg and then down the back, uh, you should be able to wiggle out. Then it's a matter of slowly cutting up those lines. Um, now I, I'm having my husband use like some, uh, ch children's scissors that have the blunt front. Uh, the problem is my husband is left-handed and we only have one left-handed pair of scissors for him, which he ended up switching to because he couldn't handle the, uh, the children's scissors. Uh, he was very careful, like stuck his fingers down between the skin and my duct tape dummy to be able to cut. Um, he didn't cut my clothes. He didn't cut my skin because he was very careful. Um, so he got my arms and freed and it was very nice to move around. The problem is when it came to my calves and that area that just had my skin, well, when you're wrapped in plastic, you sweat a little bit and that plastic sticks to your skin like crazy. So he was having a really hard time getting up my leg and it was actually really uncomfortable because everything had just like sealed to my leg so tightly. Um, but he eventually got it off and we had to peel little bits of plastic off my skin after. And um, I was able to wiggle out of the whole duct tape tomb. Now it's time to stuff it. I cleaned up the edges a bit and just slowly started uh, tacking it together with strips of duct tape. I needed to make sure to transfer any lines that my husband had drawn for me in there. And um, I started stuffing at this point too, because it's like hard to stuff into the arms uh, when you have the rest of it all sealed up so I'm starting to stuff and I thought I could use like this kind of heavier duty uh, packing material that I had saved from some orders and it just wasn't filling the space like I wanted so I uh, dipped into my secret stash of newspaper that I had for another project and stuffed the arms now newspaper is like um I don't know. It's, it's like an extinct species now. You, it's really hard to find, uh, because nobody's printing it much anymore. So, and it's, it's historically been my favorite material to stuff duct tape dummies with. So, uh, you'll see, I kind of run out of newspaper and have to come up with some solutions later in the video. I just like the way that newspaper compacts and fills the space. It's soft enough that it you can like really stuff it in there and um, they, you don't have any like weird voids. Um, also having something uh, to jam the paper down inside is always good. Uh, it helps save your hands a little bit because it's really rough just trying to jam it in there on your with your fingers or your wrist it starts to really hurt so keep keep a, a stick or a blunt object that's skinny on hand now for the feet i took a little extra precaution because i didn't want the bottom of the foot to get too rounded as i went and 
and cut out some pieces of cardboard in the shape, like I just stood on the cardboard and traced around my heel um, and simply taped those like two layers of that together and jammed it at the bottom of the foot to, to help keep that sort of flat and stable. Also, sometimes there's a little bit of extra plastic wrap on the inside that makes jamming things down annoying, so it's, it's a good idea to try to tear out what extra you can before stuffing. As I started getting to the bigger areas that I needed to stuff, like up into the thigh and into the body cavity, I started using more of that uh, bulkier, harder packing material and, uh, you know, f filling around the, the void areas with my newspaper. Another thing I like to do is kind of embed a hanger in there, and I just had these two kind of weak-feeling plastic hangers, and I, I taped them together to try to make them a little bit more strong. And I ran out of newspaper at this point, and I uh, ran out of other rigid packing material, and so I resorted to use some of the packing material that I use for my Etsy orders uh, just to like try to finish up the last little bit and make sure that it was like uh, really packed in around the arms so they wouldn't sag. Um, another thing that I, that I used is like the plastic grocery bags that I hadn't taken back for recycling yet. Good thing I like kept forgetting to do that because I really needed that material. And the, you know, the plastic bags, they pack in more densely than the newspaper, uh, but they do like work really well to fill in the voids of the other packing materials. Now, some areas I felt voids in, but they were too hard to reach from the neck hole. So I just sliced open a little hole and started stuffing it in through there, and then I would tape it back up later. You'll see me do this several several places on the body, um, just wherever I felt like it wasn't um, full enough or had like a little uh, air bubble inside, I guess. I, I just went and stuffed it in there. The plastic bags were really nice for that because they could be stuffed in really easily through a tiny hole. There we go. A double me. Any guesses on what my next project is? <laughs>